This is very surprising. You have higher uh, all-cause mortality in these age groups for the vaccinated than the unvaccinated. 18 to 39, marginally higher. 40 to 49, marginally higher. And, and a reasonable amount higher for 90 plus. So this really is a big question. You're seeing not only you're not seeing any effectiveness um, uh, for all cause mortality, you're actually seeing sort of negative effectiveness. You're seeing a higher mortality rate uh, in these age groups for the vaccinated than you are for the unvaccinated. And this is the reality. So pretty well everything else is spin. And, you know, as I said, part of the way they do that spin is to only look at COVID-19 mortality rate, which is lower for the vaccinated. And then you, but you're ignoring what's going on in the non-COVID. And there's a lot of stuff going on there. And the non-COVID plus the COVID ends up at the all-cause figure, which is higher in these age groups. So, Hi folks, I uh, was thinking slow here. Uh, we wanted to look today at some uh, new data that's been released about um, uh, mortality by vaccination status, because uh, I think like some of the work we looked at at the end of last year, that doesn't support uh, the government narrative. So you know, there really has to be a question mark about um, the effectiveness of uh, the treatment that's being currently used. Um, and actually some of the data we're gonna look at is actually really, really surprising for March 2020, uh, what is going on with all cause mortality. So let's look at that. And also, as I mentioned before, uh, the point is not to get buried too deep into statistics, but actually, to use this work for the Great Resist program, which is actually about pushing back on government and getting them back within their constitutional boundaries. Uh, and part of that is to explain that much of what they tell you is very misleading. And this is particularly the case on this narrative around this treatment that they've been pushing. Uh, if you look at the details, the whole, the whole story falls apart, which is the point of the picture. So let, let's get on with that then. Um, this is the starting point then. This is the recent report that they've just issued. And uh, this is the headline chart that they use. This is the uh, age standardized mortality rate uh, by, for, uh, for COVID uh, against different categories of vaccination. And we'll come back to this, but this was this ludicrous uh, 32 times more likely to die of COVID uh, if if uh, unvaccinated, which we picked apart uh, at the end of last year and ended up in a complaint to the uh, statistics regulator. Uh, but even here, you know, even here looking at this at first glance, you can see that these fantastic sort of effectiveness against death, uh, it's, it's beginning, you can't actually unpick here which of these lines is unvaccinated versus vaccinated. So we've actually zoomed in here uh, and this sort of, uh, I guess, is a turquoise line is the unvaccinated. And you can see already here that the age standardized mortality rate for the unvaccinated is already lower, uh, even for COVID, than for the one dose and two dose. And there's two categories of two dose that we'll look at in a minute. But you can see this is a sort of breakdown of the narrative that the uh, vaccination is, you know, X percent effectiveness against death. Already here, the age standardized mortality rate is lower in the unvaccinated than these partially vaccinated categories. And just before leaving this, this is the third dose vaccinated. And there's two important things that we'll look at here. One of them is that you have to basically aggregate this, 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 and this to get a useful number because this number on its own doesn't really mean anything if you've had to go through periods of elevated mortality rates for one and two dose in order to end up at a three dose position. Uh, and the other thing we'll look at briefly is the age standardization, because when you apply that to a very, very aged population group, and that is the case for COVID deaths, you tend to almost delete those deaths. They're, they're weighted, the, the weighting is so low that you tend to artificially push, push this number down. So age standardization, uh, as far as we can work out, is very useful in a lot of circumstances, but when you're dealing at the very edge of the distribution in terms of 
older age groups that actually comes up with answers that are that are not helpful that actually blurring the real picture by by providing such a low weighting to deaths in the very elderly and we can look a little bit at that so these are the things i mentioned that caused a lot of the distortion that we can we can gallop through a little bit so one is the time series starts in january 2020 where basically nobody was vaccinated and we, we covered that in november last year uh, those kind of charts and the statistics they quote they only look at covid and that's what we're going to look at now. We're going to bring in the non-COVID deaths and we're going to look at all-cause mortality because that's such a much more important and useful measure. And we think that the ONS is just playing to the narrative by only focusing on COVID. And we'll look at this uh, never-ending argument about population size. I'm, I'm not going to go into it too much because we've written a note about it, uh, but I'll show you how significant that is. That is potentially increasing the incidence or mortality rate in the unvaccinated by a factor of six. And that, of course, tends to uh, overstate the effectiveness of vaccines. If you multiply up by six, your mortality rate in the unvaccinated. Uh, and as I said, the last point was in the, in the very elderly, you apply a very low weighting that tends to actually distort the figures rather than help the figures when you move towards age standardization. So um, yeah, uh, you may remember at the end of last year that we, when that graph first came out, we did quite a big piece of work that was well received and it ended up with uh, someone complaining, actually someone taking our work and complaining to the statistics authority and they came back with a fairly, uh, fairly weak rebuke. But you know, here we are months later, nothing's changing. They're still twisting around these numbers, still, uh, cherry picking data to support the narrative and we're going to uncherry pick this for them um, and so you actually know what's really going on so let's start then with the first point which as we said is um, the the ONS will only ever talk about you know third third dose uh, that's the complete vaccination program and they sort of ignore all of these interim steps so these are uh, non-COVID deaths uh, by vaccination status and this picture you'll see a lot basically when it, this happens with cases and hospitalization as well. In these partially vaccinated groups, uh, these incidence rate, this is a mortality rate in this case, goes up a lot. Um, so when you end up with a sort of overall impact of vaccination, you really should take a weighted average of all of these. Now, these are partly due to the fact that the, the size of these populations is quite small. So there's very, very few people that have taken a first dose and stopped at that. Basically, everyone has moved on to a second dose and a lot of the second dose have moved on to a third dose. But, you know, that doesn't stop them. So I'm acknowledging that, but that doesn't stop them twisting the, the data uh, against the vac unvaccinated by trying to make this number as small as possible by using... OS population figures, but here we need to acknowledge, well, firstly, these numbers exist, uh, and secondly, they do partly reflect a very small population level here. And when you're dealing, again, at the edges of, of numbers, uh, and you're dividing by very small numbers, these rates can go up and down a lot. But still, you know, this is a very familiar picture for anyone that looks at these statistics. They only ever talk about sort of fully vaccinated and they pretend all this stuff doesn't exist. Well, it does exist. And when you factor it in, you end up with a weighted average, which is much higher usually than the third dose or fully vaccinated. And that's the case here as well. And that plays into what we're going to look at next, which is the main, the main question. So this really is the main question uh, is the ONS and the government only look at uh, COVID um, mortality rate on its own and that quite often is lower as I said for the fully vaccinated for every single age group and in doing that they ignore all-cause mortality and all-cause mortality is a much more important number and I think Professor Fenton has explained that a lot because it avoids the whole issue of death attribution and that's why it's so important because you get away from that argument now this is literally all-cause mortality. I've taken this pretty well straight from ONS. There's a few notes about one small adjustment I had to make. Uh, you can see that on the website. But here, 
this is very surprising, you have higher uh, all-cause mortality in these age groups for the vaccinated than the unvaccinated. 18 to 39, marginally higher, 40 to 49, marginally higher, and a, and a reasonable amount higher for 90 plus. So this really is a big question. You're seeing, not only you're not seeing any effectiveness um, uh, for all-cause mortality, you're actually seeing sort of negative effectiveness. You're seeing a higher mortality rate uh, in these age groups for the vaccinated than you are for the unvaccinated. And this is the reality. So pretty well everything else is spin. And, you know, as I said, part of the way they do that spin is to only look at COVID-19 mortality rate, which is lower for the vaccinated. And then you, but you're ignoring what's going on in the non-COVID. And there's a lot of stuff going on there. And the non-COVID plus the COVID ends up at the all-cause figure, which is higher in these age groups. So let's split out um, the effect of the non-COVID mortality. And that's much bigger than the COVID mortality in, in a rough order of magnitude sort of number for this analysis in March 2020. Uh, the COVID mortality rate is about 10% of the all-cause mortality rate. So the real big number, of course, is non-COVID mortality, which is about 90% roughly of all-cause mortality. And if this goes up uh, the, for the vaccinated relative to the unvaccinated, this will push, this will drive the whole of the all-cause number, which is what you're seeing, because it's the same three groups again, the 1839, 40, 49 and 90 plus, they have a higher uh, mortality rate in the vaccinated than the unvaccinated. Now that's a big question, you know, this should not be happening, you know, what what is going on here? That uh, Nobody's attempted even to ask or answer that question. And as I said, the ONS just pretends this whole non-COVID mortality piece doesn't exist. So the data, yes, they do disclose the data, which is buried in a very complicated spreadsheet. But in their graphs and in their conclusions, they never, ever discuss this. And this is the piece you need in order to get to the all-cause mortality, which is really ultimately the most important bit of data from all of this. Um, so just one word as well uh, about an ongoing um, uh, debate about the use of uh, population figures. And I've put this in a written note because it might not be interesting for everybody. But the bottom line of this is um, that the NHS system thinks there's many more people uh, in the UK or in England than, than, than the ONS does. And it's a very big difference. It's 5.7 million people, which is something that ONS never mentions. They sort of talk about the concept that their numbers are lower than the NHS data, which is he held in this NIMS database but they don't talk about the magnitude. The magnitude is huge, 5.7 million uh, for adults. And if you start breaking that down into what that means for the unvaccinated population, which is total population minus vaccinated equals unvaccinated, you can see um, that when you're using the ONS population numbers, you end up with very, very uh, fewer uh, unvaccinated than if you use the NIMS data. I mean, this somewhere here is about a factor of six. So when you take your, you know, whatever it happens to be, say it's deaths and you divide it by uh, the NIMS number, you get a mortality rate. But if you're taking it by the ONS population, you can get a mortality rate that's six times higher. Now, I've written in the in the Word document why I think it's it's basically quasi-fraudulent to use the ONS population statistics. There's a good reason for that, why I think it's completely wrong. And all it does is to push up the mortality rate or the incidence rate in the unvaccinated. I think it's a dirty sleight of hand uh, that's used to basically prop up the failing narrative from the government. Um, and then just before signing off on this, um, you know, it's all you can always do a quick sense check, and this is a substack that's been looking at uh, COVID deaths per hundred thousand versus um, population vaccinated. So, you know, the and, and Professor Fenton's done a similar one, but this is uh, in nice colors and circles, so it's easy to follow. But, uh, you know, the, the, the basic common sense uh, 
assumption should be that this this sort of goes like this if if we've got this fantastic effectiveness you know 80 percent 90 percent who knows what kind of numbers they throw out about effectiveness the line should be going down like this but it's not it's going essentially the other way so you know as a common sense check uh, looking across countries there's really nothing that's showing me that you know more vaccination is lowering COVID deaths, and this is just COVID. This isn't, let's forget all cause mortality here. So this plays into our analysis that there's no particularly benefit that we're seeing. We're certainly not seeing anything, a benefit anything like the assumptions that the HSA is, use, is using. So that, this, this supports the argument we've been making, I think. Uh, so just then in the final conclusion, obviously this is quite quick and there's more, there's more work in the Word document if you're interested in the workings. Um, but the, the very high discrepancy in that chart at the beginning in quarter one has basically evaporated either under, even under ONS's own analysis and that's just for COVID. So the mortality rates just for COVID have really converged and there's no obvious really difference between certainly the unvaccinated and one and two dose vaccinated. In fact, those categories, one and two dose vaccinated are higher than the unvaccinated already. Um, so that there's, no, there's none of this 32 times more likely to die if unvaccinated uh, numbers, which, which we said at the time was nonsense. Uh, and it was done by manipulating the data. And I think that was more or less acknowledged. Um, and then, uh, as we said now, in, um, in March 2020, those, uh, the mortality rates even for all causes have also converged. And actually, for the vaccinated in, in those three age categories, all cause mortality is higher, uh, 18 to 39, 40 to 49 and 90 plus. So that's a huge question. If this is so effective, why is the all cause mortality rate higher in the vaccinated for those three age groups? Um, uh, and as I said before, the ONS will always focus on the sort of what they call the fully vaccinated, only on that one number, but, that, but the partially vaccinated always seem to have a higher mortality rate or incidence rate of COVID, and you need to look at all of those pieces together, and that's what we've done. We've looked at a sort of weighted average vaccinated, because you cannot just take the third dose and then ignore what's going on in the first and second dose, which is what they do. And that's why we added that back in here so you can get a fuller picture of what's um, going on. So, I mean, I hope that's helped, you know, big questions, essentially, this uh, advertised eff effectiveness, we're really not seeing. And I think the crucial bottom line is in March 2020, the all cause mortality was higher in certain groups of vaccinated than it was in the unvaccinated. Big question why that is. It certainly doesn't support the narrative that is being pushed all the time at us. This is all the material. There's a written note as well on the website that goes into the details. And, you know, as we've said before, this is not just about statistics. This is about resisting this endless uh, and completely unjustified government overreach uh, they're grabbing power, they're using it uh, incompetently, and they need to be stopped. Uh, it's not science. When you pick at the science, it falls to pieces. And uh, this is really what we're doing, working on the great resist, stopping the indoctrination in state institutions, um, stopping the government overreach, and untangling the unhealthy uh, marriage of big business and the state, which is really leaving people holding the short straw in most cases. And those are our three agenda items. And if you can support us on Patreon, uh, we can actually fund that work. And as we always like to stay, say, stay free, don't stay safe. Thank you. Goodbye.